people living there. And you have two religions, primarily Islam and Judaism, who have no requirement for forgiveness. Right? If you're a Christian, you have to forgive to be a Christian. Not if you're a Jew. You don't have to forgive to be a Jew. If you're Muslim, you don't have to forgive to be a Muslim. Those are not commands for them. And they're in regions where a long memory is everything. Um, to me, the key is this about today's situation. And I know some of you are probably, well, it doesn't matter what I say. Some of you are going to get angry. But if I may be so bold, the reason you might get angry is because you pretend this is like football, that you're either right or left. Um, and at some point we all stopped thinking and it's really driving me nuts. It is a complicated, messy situation. Um, the Palestinians, there are Palestinians in the Jewish Congress. There's no, I, we use these, like the left and the right both use these dumb words. Uh, like, you know, the way they've taken the word racism and just watered it down to mean nothing. And they're doing the same with apartheid. Well, I don't know how you have apartheid when you have Palestinians in the Jewish Congress. I don't know how you pull that off. I've been there. I've watched Jewish and Palestinian kids and adults playing together. But when you look at the West Bank and Gaza, when you look at where Hamas is, the political party in charge, Yasser Arafat, when he had the PLO, died a billionaire while his people were dying of hunger. And the leadership of Hamas right now is doing just fine financially. They're doing great. Their people are starving to death. And by the way, they read a, led a raid where they raped and pillaged and killed and murdered. And Israel punched back. And people are saying, well, they punched back too hard. Okay, I, I tend to agree, but I don't know what the answer is. I know that dead Jewish kids and dead Palestinian kids breaks my heart. Everybody over there deserves better. But just like in the U.S., we keep electing the worst possible people. Just like in the U.S. Um, how does Hamas get elected? Their political party, their platform is, we're going to kill all the Jews. So no surprise they raided Israel. There's a bunch of Jews there. But... Once they got control, it's not like they laid it down. Nobody's voted for Hamas since, I think, 2009, I think. I don't know. I'd have to look it up. They haven't held an election since then, I don't think. Yeah. But, guys, you know, and I don't mean to be dramatic. And I mean this, and no one will listen to me, and I get it. This is why I won't vote for either of these parties we have. They're doing the same thing. Uh, and they're going to get us all cranked up till we start killing each other. Because they don't care about you. They care about power. Um, and when people like that are in charge, the people under them are always going to suffer. Not the people making the horrible decisions. The people who voted for the jerks that make horrible decisions. Um, in the end, anti-Semitism has been a significant factor since pre-Roman times. And again, we should try to find that, sis. I did a whole show on it. Right. And where did that come from? Real simple. The Jews were the only people in the world who said there's one God for a very, very, very long time. And it freaked everybody out. And not just that, but they also said, you got to go on Kalani. OK. They also said your God isn't real. That'll tick a, a relative off, relativist off. So I, I feel like I'm babbling. OK. I probably said enough. Did I say too much? Nope. OK. In the end, just like the Strickland thing, pray. Jesus, do something. How's that? That's been my prayer. You have two vast religious groups, armed to the teeth, though somehow starving to death, who don't have any requirement in their religion to forgive their enemies. And this has been going on for longer than I've been alive. I don't know what's going to happen, uh, but it's not going to be good. Um, we got to pray. And put aside that whole thing of Jews bad, Palestinians good, or Palestinians bad and Jews good. It's a crisis of leadership. Right? You elect a group of people who tell you it's bad because of them. And then they get elected and they tell you, we well, got to vote for us again because the other people are bad. You know, ugh, it's demonic. 
Okay. Um, I've been reading a lot of Stoic philosophy. Groovy. Um, do you know why it's called Stoic? Seriously. It's the Greek word for the porch. Uh, they would sit under this porch, this portico. And anyway, okay. Uh, especially... Uh, Epicletus, do you mean? Okay, which I find very helpful for dealing with personal challenges. Does anything about Stoicism conflict with Catholicism? A bit, but oddly enough, I do a lot of Stoicistic thought myself. It's the idea of, how's this? Here's the Catholic version of it, okay? Um, I will not be ruled by my emotions. As best I can, my emotions will be my servant, not my master. And I stink at it, but I'm trying. I'm trying every day. And if you read, come Holy Spirit, the acting person by St. John Paul II, although when he wrote it, he was Carl Atiyah, uh, he talks about that, right? He says a human is a body-soul unity and that the glue in the bridge between the body and soul is the human feelings. And that for a human, if you want to be more human, then you discipline and educate your feelings. And that's kind of stoic, okay? So I think that's the quickest way I can answer that. And I hope you found it helpful. If not, it's your fault. And Carrie's. <coughs> what does it mean to believe in Jesus Christ? Wow. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of things, right? I don't mean to be funny. Let me think. Um... Okay, there's a lot of things. Let's start at the most base level. I believe in Jesus Christ, meaning I believe he existed. It could mean that. You could mean I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he existed. Okay, the devil believes that too. When John tends to talk about believing in Jesus Christ, he's talking about this idea of not just actually assenting to the fact of his existence or even his divinity, but specifically, St. John means it as in, and I'm all in, right? Uh, again, this is where the English language can fail us a little and where Greek is super helpful, right? Hold on just a second. Oh, did we ever get a cough button? Not yet. We're going to though, right? Yeah. We need one. And then you know what I'll do? I'm going to intentionally give myself a sickness so I can cough a lot and push the button. <laughs> there you go. You're well, welcome. Coming. You won't have to give it to yourself. Who is? Winter. Winter is coming. When Jesus in the Gospel of John or in the letters of John, when it talks about believing in Christ, it means you're all in. And I'm speaking, of course, again, very generally, because I don't know how, oh, I see, we're not doing bad on time. Oh my gosh, I was worried I've been talking too much. When we talk about believing in Jesus Christ as Catholics, what we're saying is we're all in. Hey, because if you look at like the first part of the creed, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and you can see the devil going, yep. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. Yep. Right? That there is an element to the way we use belief in English that can unintentionally muddle things. Jesus wants you all in. Jesus, I believe what you did. I believe what you say. And I'm going to try to imitate that with my whole life. How's that? Okay. If that didn't answer your question, just let me know. Uh, when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert, was the devil trying to get him to commit suicide? No. Uh, there's. I mean, excuse me. No, I don't think so. I think it was more a matter of you're talking about where the second temptation in one of the Gospels and the third in, in the other the devil takes Jesus up to the parapet of the temple, right? It's the highest point. And he tells him, throw yourself down. Because uh, scripture says the angels will catch you, right? And by the way, right, well, don't get into that. Okay. Uh, your angels will catch you lest you dash your foot upon a stone, right? What song is that? Unless you dash your foot against a stone. Which one? 91. Yeah, 91. But I mean, which song? There's a song, lest you dash your foot against a stone. No? And he will raise you up. Is that the one? On <laughs> eagle swings. Anyway, uh, he wasn't trying to get him to commit suicide. Make no mistake, Jesus wouldn't, uh, I don't think, crashed and burned. Um, okay, can I do all three temptations real quick to help this make sense or no? 
Huh? No? Okay, you can tell me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just to help you make sense of it, because they're easy to misunderstand. As I understand it, the devil is tempting Jesus toward a certain type of rule. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Dostoevsky breaks this down really well in his book, The Brothers Karamazov. There's a chapter called The Myth of the Grand Inquisitor. I think I'm saying this all right. And if I'm wrong, I'm only a chapter or two off. I mean, it's been 100 years. But he talks about this idea of the devil tempting Jesus to change how God rules. How does God rule? Well, so let's look. The first temptation is, look, you're hungry. Here's some stones. Turn them into bread. Could Jesus have done that? Yes. Would it have been good bread? Better than Panera, which is saying something because Panera, you know, some salad bread. Actually, Great Harvest is better. Can I say that? I don't have a sponsor. Heinz Ketchup. Um, will Jesus be the God who fills our bellies? Right? That They're, in a sense, arguing over how God is going to be God and how much faith God has in us. Like, in the end, these temptations show us the radical faith God has in us. If you fill their bellies, they'll follow you, right? That that's that's politics, right? That's politics. Give people what they want, they'll vote for you. Um, and Jesus believes you can follow him when you're hungry, when he's not meeting your needs that you believe you have. Uh, the next temptation is, of course, big signs. We're always looking for the big sign, yeah? Throw yourself off the parapet of the temple. Imagine this. It's 31 AD. Yeah. And you're walking through Jerusalem, and some dude starts, like, flying, and angels catch him and put him on the ground. You'd go find that guy. You know, he'd be like, hi! Need some followers? Um, the devil wants Jesus to reduce himself to being a God who just keeps giving us signs. Signs, 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 signs. I mean, oh, we'll follow signs. But signs are a little bit like, to me at least, nicotine. You know, works great. Then you need more. And then you need more. Then you need more. Right? So the devil's temptation there is not towards suicide. It's, will you be a God who just keeps giving them big signs? And God's thing so far is, no, they'll follow me with empty stomachs. They'll follow me uh, without the big signs. And then the third is where the devil shows them all the kingdoms of the world in an instant. And says, all oh, this can be yours. All you got to do is worship me. He's so transparent. Right? Like that's, okay, don't get into that. So, could God force us to follow him? Yeah. But that's not the kind of God he is because he believes you will freely choose him with an empty stomach and a broken heart. And you'll do that because you were made for truth. And even when truth is unappealing to us, we're attracted to it. He put that chunk of himself in us. In the end, the devil tends to think you're like a little dog and God tends to see that you're capable of extraordinary things. And I'd go with God on this one. He tends to be right. Yeah, he's, got he's got a good track record. Do you remember the whole resurrection from the dead thing? That was impressive. I mean, sure, I've done it twice. But that was more like a heavy sleep and waking up. So I don't know if that helps you, but that's a good way to look at, as I can see it, the last... the. Uh, I almost said The Last Temptation of Christ, which was a weird book. Did you ever read that? That was a weird book. Um, does anyone remember what we were talking about? Something with God and Jesus. Oh, uh, the, so that's to me what the second temptation was. Will you be a God who gives them big signs all the time? And Jesus is saying, no. <laughs> no. Um, you don't need faith if you've got big signs. Right, look at Jesus flat out says it at the end of John. He says to uh, what's his butt, um, Thomas, Thomas, you believe because you saw me? How much blessed are those? How much more blessed are those who have never seen me and believe? That's you and me, right? We're more blessed than the apostles. Think about that. Although I did see Jesus once, he was mowing the lawn.
in the St. Augustine, I, or, okay, uh, my brain is fried. Okay. This is great. No, I can do it. In the St. Ignatius examine, Jesuits, please explain this question. Did I resist his grace today? This question comes after reviewing what stirrings in my heart were of God. Thank you. Okay, I know this one because I've talked to Uncle Lonnie. Um, what does it mean to resist his grace? Well, it's pretty simple, I think. I have sins I do that I don't like. I have sins I do that I like. And I did one yesterday. I did. Do you want to hear about it? Oh, it's not that bad. I mean, it's sure. embarrassing, right? Sure. It's embarrassing. Oh. Uh, all right, so here's how I resisted grace yesterday. And I literally, I can't believe this question is here. I told him how ashamed and sorry I was. And I felt his consolation. I did. So I'm fine, but I've been in a rough stretch. I have. I've been in a dark place, a rough stretch for a bit. I got to see Uncle Lonnie and everything's better. But uh, so yesterday I'm driving by myself to go to St. Mark. And you know how good I've been. And here's what I know. I'm learning when I eat sugary things. The next day, I really do struggle with anxiousness. It is a direct connection I have learned since I've started losing all this weight. I'm in a bad place yesterday, or Wednesday, whenever Thursday was, actually. Was that yesterday? Holy crap. And I'm driving to Mark's, and I see Dawn Donuts. You know Dawn Donuts? These are real donuts. This isn't that Dunkin' Donut stuff. This is like some chicken back making donuts. And I pull in. And I sit in my car. I swear, like I'm an alcoholic and it's a bar. And I'm like, you've been so good. Right? And, and I even went through the whole thing of, and every time you've had sugar in huge doses, you've regretted it. This time will be different. So I went in, <laughs> right? I'm in there. And did I get one donut? No, I got two. I got two. I didn't did just. You get a protein donut. Sure, that's what I got. No, I got the eight cups of sugar, and there might have been some flour involved, right? I got the white frosting with the sprinklies, which is my favorite, and the little soft donut. And. White sprinkles? Huh? I mean, pardon? Oh, well, of course, we're not barbarians here. Uh, I got those sour cream donuts. Duh. Brah. Brah. And I rammed those things in my mouth before I could stop and think. I mean, I was like the three-year-old kid in birthday cake. Those videos you see. And, and I knew it, and I knew I had what it took to stop, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to. It was childish petulance. It was a complete resistance of grace. And I felt bad. Well, later, right, when eight gallons of sugar hits your bloodstream at Mach 2. Uh, but there was immediate shame there was an immediate recognition of what I'd done. And again, I'm not, I know I didn't do anything horrible, but you get me. I resisted grace. And why? Because I wanted a sin. Is a donut a sin? No. Did I need a donut? No. Was a donut, in fact, the absolute wrong thing to get? Yes. Why? Because it's going to help me a little, but that's going to take more to help me next time. Sin always makes you less free. You get me? Sin makes, us stupid Sin makes us stupid. So that's a great, I can't believe you asked this question and I might hate you for it. But I had to tell that story. And I repented. I did. Uh, fairly quickly. I mean, if it was too late, God didn't take the donut effect away. I would have loved that. Uh, does that help? Yeah. Okay. It would be a great idea to do a show on the cultural context of the Bible. <gasps> I did. Yes, you did. Yes, it's in the... We, we got to figure this out. My nephew, Chewy, uh, and his wife, Megan, are having another squiggly. But he has offered to try to organize everything. Because, Carrie, you're so busy. 
Um, but things are organized. Don't get me wrong. There's oh. playlists, and you can and they can go to the YouTube page and Google it. Okay. But the the things that we don't so the any shows that we've done with a title that they can, you know, hit on, they'll be fine. They'll find it. Okay. The things that they won't find that we need cataloged are. <coughs> the hashtags that come up in your Q&A's on Friday. Okay, I got you, sis. All right, here's what we'll do. We'll, no, we won't. Never mind. Um, <laughs> you can look for it. <laughs> Sorry. You got to go on, Kalani. Love you. All right. Um, okay. Uh, and then someone talks about the Israelites not being able to eat from the sciatic muscle because of Jacob's injury after battling an angel, right? Which is a great story. Right. Jacob is asleep on the ground, his head on a rock. And if you know anything about Jacob, he was a snaky snake. Right. He, he was a he was a huckster. I think that's the word. Is that the word? That's not a bad word, is it? There was a word I was using that I found out as a bad word and I didn't know. Really? Yeah, I'm trying to remember what it was. This was just a few years ago. I was like, you know, it was a blah, blah. And they were like, pardon? Um. Oh, I know what it was. Okay. Anyway, remind me to tell you afterward. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so Jacob, you, you got to remember, Jacob was a con man. Jacob pulled some things. He got suckered and he suckered people. And in fact, I did a whole show on that, right? Friarism, it's called, right? Friar is the um, uh, Yiddish word for being a sucker. And if you, well, you want to know that plays a huge part into the conflict today. Uh, especially because the Palestinian leadership has broke every single agreement they've made with Israel, right? Uh, but they always feel like you're trying to sucker them. It's a national neurosis. It's hilarious and weird. Um, but all this to say, uh, Jacob, all of a sudden a dude just rolls up on him and they start scrapping, right? Now, Jacob doesn't know it's an angel. Uh, and the angel clearly wasn't ready for Jacob uh, being as tough as he was. And it says they wrestled all night and then the angel decided to kind of cheat <laughs> and popped his, uh, hip out of socket, punched him and popped his hip out. So Jacob, Jacob, the grabber, uh, right. That's what it means. Remember when he came out the womb, he was holding on to his brother's ankle, like screw you. I'm first, uh, grabs that ankle of the angel and won't let go. And the angel's like, dude, let me go. That's what he said in Hebrew. Quote, Dudeth. Uh, Dudeth, thou shalt unleash me. Uh, and Jacob says, I'm not letting you go till you bless me. And so the angel blesses him and changes his name from Jacob to Israel, which means wrestles with God, Israel. Um, but in honor of that, the Jews won't eat that part. Uh, of an animal, it's, which is just hysterical. Um, yeah. Whoo. Okay. Want to go to the OBGYN one? Uh, yeah. I, I'm scared of questions that start with I'm an OBGYN because I just automatically assume I can't help you. It's like when someone says, I'm a parent of 27, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know. Uh, okay. Oh, I get you. I'm peeking. Okay, so give me a second, folks. This is a very detailed question from a listener in Washington. Hello, Washington. And by the way, great football team. Yeah. Uh, okay, a person they work with basically snapped. And, oh, boy. Okay, trigger warning. Um, okay. Ended their own life and somebody else's. And that the whole time this you've known him, this the person asking the question, they're lovely. What the heck? His actions in the last 18 hours of his time on earth are not ones any of us could imagine he is capable of. Uh, I am struggling and mourning the loss of his life, bright future and friendship. At the same time, I'm absolutely heartbroken that someone I knew and loved could and did commit nope. Can't violence. Yeah. Do you have any advice on how I can heal my heart from this? You know, as a medical person, you know 
anything's possible, right? Um, when someone acts one way their entire known life and then the last 18 does unspeakable things, it's a fairly safe assumption that they lost their freedom, be it a spiritual affliction or a physical one. Um, I think I can say this. Let me think. I have a few friends, and I mean, uh, it's just it's a Montrose thing, uh, that were professional athletes. Okay. Um, and one of them I know uh, has a whole legal document prepared. He played D end in pro football for years. And what he just assumes is that CTE will consume him, right? He said, he's told me numerous times, I don't remember weeks of my life from when I was playing in the NFL. Um, and so his wife has all these things ready for when he starts to show signs. God, I could cry. I'm sorry. He's a good dude. Um, because he's going to lose his freedom. It's just assumed, right? We know a lot now. We know we probably shouldn't be playing football, uh, American football. Um, and I say that as someone who suffered 12 concussions in my life. Um, yeah. And to me, there's reason, and you've got your reason, meaning your ability to reason, namely... This isn't him. If I'm one way for 50 years of my life, and then the last 18, I'm the exact opposite, something went wrong. 18 hours. Huh? 18 hours. What did I say? You just said 18. I didn't oh, shot. Sleep. Okay, 18 hours. Yeah, if it's 18 years, then I've made some decisions. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I'm making any sense. For something to be a sin, we have to be free to not do it. And whether it's something in the blood chemistry, whether it's a tumor, whether it's CTE, you just never know. Well, you know this. You're a medical doctor. You're an OBGYN. Um, I can't even spell that word. Really? You did not find that even remotely funny. Are you serious? All right. I'm sorry. I know this is a serious thing. And I'm sorry. I, I just, uh, I'm so sorry. But even reason can only take us so far. Um, love that dude. Pray for him. Pray for his soul. Pray that if it was a spiritual affliction, God free him. If it was a physical affliction, that God heal it and get him home. Um, nobody starts off their week and says, by the end of it, I'm going to do horrible things and then take my own life. Um, I'm just so sorry. Uh, I like what you wrote. I continue to put my sorrow at the feet of Jesus. Um, and that's what you do. Doing the right thing doesn't always help us. Doing the right thing. In movies means the soundtrack rolls and the credits roll and the soundtrack kicks in and everything's shiny, but that's not how it works. Um, doing the right thing, not going to help you feel better very soon. And it shouldn't. He deserves your tears. He deserves your pain and awareness. It seems to me like as I read this, he's someone who earned that with your affection Ah, uh, gosh, I feel like I'm babbling. Your pain is not your enemy. It's the thing compelling you to pray. It's the thing compelling you to risk loving another faulty human uh, or to continue loving faulty humans because you're a faulty human. And one thing I am painfully aware of uh, is how far and fast I could fall. Right. And that's a, probably a healthy thing for us all to be aware of. Uh, I have buried so many people whose last days did not reflect their first 40, 50 years. I can't tell you how many times. And in the end, the comfort for me is always I'm not going to be judged by a moment. 
I don't know what I don't know. Here's what I do know. God desperately loves this man more than you ever could. And more than you want anything, the Lord wants him home. So let your heart be broken. I'm sorry. He's worth that. And if it makes you pray for him, well, then praise God. That pain's a good thing. Um, and we'll pray too, huh? Okay. I don't feel like I was helpful. All right. Okay. So, oh, my lady. That sounds like a lady. Um, I don't know. Um, so let's uh, wrap this puppy up. I don't remember what we're doing on Wednesday, but it'll come to we're me. The Vikings. Oh, oh, I'll need a little time. Oh. Yeah, I'll probably need at least a week to get my initial outlines together. And not to be funny, I do know a lot, but I don't know it necessarily in order. And I don't know what I know that's true, right? Some of what I think I know. Some of what I know might not be true, right? So I'll need to do a little research. Um, so next week is Thanksgiving. So maybe we should yeah, do, do it on gratitude, huh? Gratitude and, you know, spending time with... Eating turkey with that's right. All those people that drive us crazy and love gobbling us. turkey. Yeah, that's true. Hey, how about this? Should we tell people Wednesday's show? I'm going to talk about Thanksgiving and answer your family questions. Ooh, I love that. I do too. Okay, love, love, because love that. my that's family's true. perfect, but I'll bet yours is nuts. Do you know what every family thinks theirs is the bad one? I'm serious. I can't tell you how many people it's like, have you ever heard anything this screwed up? Yeah, last time I called home. It's all right. We're all nuts, right? Uh, if we were all perfect, there would be no drama in our lives. Not the fun kind of drama. Not the, the you know, she brought potato salad. Oh, my gosh. This is why we, oh, I almost said something naughty. <laughs> and cut. And scene. Okay, so let's wrap this puppy up and um, do me a favor. Uh, let's pray for Pope Francis. Let's pray for Bishop Strickland. Let's pray for our Jewish pal and Palestinian brothers and sisters. And let's pray for this wonderful person uh, who is an OBGYN who, and for the soul of that person's friend. I keep assuming a female. I mean, a male OBGYN, is, that's kind of... No? My OBGYNs were all male. Okay, I didn't know. I don't have one of those. Uh, no, really? Okay, and scene. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't have an OBGYN. Oh, no, I mean, I don't have an OBGYN. But I don't know. Really? They're not a woman? Wouldn't no, you prefer they were great. I don't know. They were great. I had no problem with... Yeah. yeah. That freaks me out. There were none in Cassie Bob's. They're all guys. What? What? Okay, so my GP, what do you call him, General Pratchett? Yeah, yeah, is a female. I will never have a what, male doctor. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> right, I will never have a male doctor why would if you I don't do have that? to. Okay, I'll tell you why. You want to know why you get a female doctor every time? Serious. I went through like five GPs. And when I say went through, I don't mean like I stormed out or there was whatever. Because you go talk to a male GP, and here's what happens. What are your symptoms? Well, I have, okay, here's what we're going to do. What the hey? She listens. Like uh, a female listens for some reason. And the male is just trying to like, you can see that little thing in their eyes where they've already figured out what it is. It's like, well, if you don't need me here, bro. Hold on. That's the dude I want. I don't want to have to talk about it. Really? Yes. See, I'm so freaked out that I'm just always sure I'm dying. <laughs> Right. I'm just fairly sure I'm going to come in and it's one of two extremes. Right. Like I'll never forget. And you can ask the, the the bone gal at MSU football. We were sitting there one day and she looked, what is wrong with your knee? I said, it hurts all the time. I've had four. What do you call those? And well, let me take a look at it. I was like, no. And she just we kind of got in an argument. And she was like, why don't you want me to look at it? And I, I'm dead serious. I went, do you want to know the truth? Because I'm sure you're going to x-ray it, then you're going to MRI it, and then you're going to go, yeah, you got a boo-boo, here's some aspirin. Like, I'm just fairly sure. I'm just not tough at my core, right? And the other, what is that? Oh, that's the window. Uh, the other thing is, she looks at it and says, yeah, that's cancer. You're going to be dead in a week. 
If I'm going to be dead in a week, sweet, right? I'm ready. Get me home. It is Friday. Oh, right. So it's one of those two things. It really is. It's either going to be, yeah, you've got a thing that first graders get and don't complain about. Or it's going to be, yeah, you're dead. You ate donuts. If you would have just not had those last two donuts. How did we get to this? Oh, because you have a male OBGY. I didn't even know those existed. Why do they exist? <laughs> Why do you have a female doctor? Because they're better than male doctors. I want I, a male fixing things. I disagree. And I want a female doctor. <laughs> Is that so wrong? I also want a male driving. What? I want a, I want a female running the church. <laughs> they do? Have you been to a church? <laughs> Pope Joan, pray for us. Well, maybe Wednesday's subject Saint has misogyny, <laughs> pray for us. Okay. Salad pray. Poor Jesus. All right. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, we present to you the beautiful mess that is us. All of our struggles with doubts, or lack of forgiveness, or anger, or whatever. It's all yours. We lay ourselves at your service, and we rejoice that you can even use our sin to save. How wonderful you are. We ask, Heavenly Father, for a big sign. We do. We ask for a miracle in the Middle East with our Palestinian brothers and sisters and our Jewish brothers and sisters. This is not your will. Please, Lord, please. And forgive us for voting and picking leaders who have no love for us or, or for humans. Or <sighs> Ugh. We get what we allow. Forgive us for what we allow. Lord Jesus, you see the broken heart of the person who wrote me. Oh, please, Jesus, save that man. Get him home to you. Heal these wounds and help us to cling to each other, knowing we have a lot more funerals to go in our life and the last one will be ours. And help us to live in such a way that there's no doubt about our love at the end. There's no doubt about our striving for you. That's what we want. We want to finish strong. Jesus, you know the people we love very much and worry about. And you know all the circumstances in our lives that cause us to fret. And we give all of it to you, Lord, because we love you and we trust you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My Kung Fu is strong. I'll see you next week when we talk about Thanksgiving and family drama. Until then, not as the world gives peas, do I give you peas. <laughs>